so there's graph theory and actually I think in your book there's a there's a whole chapter on predictive analysis with graph theory so I mean how how important is it for people to really understand and the sort of the the fundamentals of 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 sort of graph theory and data science in order to actually gain insight into some of these type of things and uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about what graph data science actually is, because I get some questions a few times from sort of clients where it's like, well, I'm already doing data science, so um, how is this different? How is how is graph data science going to help me? Yeah, it's, it's quite a lot to unpack there, right? So at the, at the most normal level, you don't need to understand graph theory to take advantage of graph databases, because they, they look just like you know, normal domain models that you're persisting. And in fact, the origins of Neo4j, when Emil, my boss, uh, built it, he had this idea that it was going to be a persistence mechanism for your Java domain model, right? It's kind of like the small talk runtime. So if you're a normal small software talk. engineer, uh, yeah, 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 I, I, I beg to differ, but you know, this, this, we're not meant to <laughs> be having a, a fight about language, programming. It was a great language, it just didn't make it. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I came to Neo4j not as a graph theoretician or a data scientist or anything that grand, but just as a software nerd. And I just felt that um, the way that I perceived a database should work uh, happened to be how graphs did work. So I have stuff that's connected to other stuff, you know, and some of it's densely connected, some of it's sparsely connected, and the relationships go in both directions and they have names. This is always, it's, it's kind of like the ERD that we draw if we were going to use relational, right? It's, uh, but then you didn't have to go into the relational model, you were left at the kind of ERD level, which is a lovely graph. So you don't have to care about this. But then once I got into graphs, yeah, I, I kind of found that was the gateway drug. And it's like, oh, there's like 300 years of like research here called graph theory, which I, you know, everyone kind of knows the terms. But it's kind of amazing, right? It's like a really active part of mathematics, has been for years. And I think it forms one pillar of, uh, uh, if, if you like, the, 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 the data science part of graph data science. And it's an, it's an analytic tradition that comes from maths. So in the book, we wrote about link prediction. So the, the, the easiest one, again, I'll fall back to a social graph because it's the one we all know. Um, like if I'm your friend and you're a friend of Russ, then at some point I'm going to be a friend of Russ because you've effectively transitively expressed trust or good judgment. Or in this particular case, I have to say bad judgment because Russ and I are both cowboys. Um, so what graph theory allows to do with this notion of triadic closure is predict um, where relationships will appear in graph or should appear and equally uh, where they shouldn't appear so um, if uh, if you hate me and you hate russ then it makes sense for russ and i to become friends so that we could double hate you back Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now for ad-free videos released almost daily and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.